As an example, think about the apostate-driven lies and dishonesties that Jehovah's organization is permissive toward pedophiles. I mean, that is ridiculous, isn't it? If anybody takes action against someone who would threaten our young ones and takes action to protect our young ones, it's Jehovah's organization. We reject outright such lies. In one of the dozen lawsuits I've been following, Watchtower supervisor Richard Ash was asked if the organization has a responsibility to protect children from abuse. But within the congregation, ours is a spiritual protection. When we're talking about physical protection, that's up to the secular authorities to provide. And so he was asked about the Watchtower's Bible-based directives to keep child abuse cases confidential. It states in paragraph three, mm -hmm. there is a time to keep quiet when your words should prove to be few. Do you see that? Yes, sir. You know, Mr. Joe. object to that is a violation of the First Amendment, freedom of religion, freedom of association. If anybody takes action against someone who would threaten our young ones and takes action to protect our young ones, it's Jehovah's organization. But within the congregation, ours is a spiritual protection. When we're talking about physical protection, that's up to the secular authorities to provide. Well, Pennsylvania grand jury is investigating an alleged systemic cover-up of child sexual abuse within the Jehovah's Witnesses organization. A former leader of a York County congregation is now helping that grand jury. And as Fox 43's Harry Lee explains, the organization itself could be held responsible for the actions of its members. A Pennsylvania grand jury has recently brought child sex abuse charges against nine men, all Jehovah's Witnesses, in what some are calling the most extensive investigation ever done of the group. But it's following a familiar playbook written over two decades of similar investigations of the Catholic Church, the Philadelphia Diocese in 2003 and the Altoona Johnstown Diocese in 2016. Two other investigations looked into child sex abuse at Penn State and Solbury Boarding School in Bucks County. There is no state in the country that has more knowledge about the way abuse operates in institutions in Pennsylvania. In 2018, then Attorney General Josh Shapiro released a damning report that the state's remaining six dioceses had protected more than 300 predator priests. That wasn't the only institution that we worked to hold accountable. Um, before I left the Attorney General's office, we made a handful of arrests of um, former Jehovah's Witnesses. The crux of the Jehovah's Witnesses investigation hinges on whether elders, unpaid leaders in the church, qualify as clergy. In Pennsylvania, clergy are mandated reporters, meaning if they have reasonable cause to suspect a child is the victim of abuse, they legally have to report it to the authorities. But in 33 states, including the Keystone State, there's an exemption for clergy who learn about the abuse during personal spiritual communications, like confession. This is a privilege that is created by the state. It is not required by the First Amendment. Lawyers for Jehovah's Witnesses have argued in multiple court cases across the country that elders are clergy and therefore don't have to report confidential spiritual communications. In 2020, the Ivy Hill Jehovah's Witnesses congregation in Philadelphia asked a Commonwealth court to officially rule elders have clergy penitent privilege. The court denied the request. Jehovah's Witnesses wrote in a statement, Jehovah's Witnesses do not use full-time paid clergy. However, elders are ministers who often meet the statutory definition of clergy in the state where they reside in that they are authorized to hear confessions. On the other hand, clergy still have to report abuse discovered outside of spiritual communication. That could open up lawsuits against elders who covered up known abuse. Watchtower loves to say that we have no paid clergy, so therefore that they do not have to mandate reporting. But the other time, on the other hand, they want to play it both ways where they want to say they want all the privileges of clergy. So Martin Hawk is a former Jehovah's priests, Witnesses elder who didn't report his own daughter's sexual assaults to police for 11 years. So, even though I had doubts and fears, I was still a true believer at that time. So I thought that we would get justice for my daughter through the organization, not for the legal system. A 2002 BBC report revealed Watchtower kept a secret database of allegations of child molestation. Hawk says it still exists. Every King Mall has documents of child abuse, of drinking, spousal abuse, rape, 
homosexuality, any, any kind of thing, drug abuse going back to, to, for, for 70 years, the 1950s. When Hawk was an elder, he admits he helped destroy some of them. We were told by headquarters to shred all the records. He left the religion in 2016 and is now helping with the investigation, which he says is why he was offered immunity from potential charges for not reporting abuse when he was an elder, though we could not confirm that with the attorney general's office. Leaving the faith is called disfellowshipping in the church. Among those leaving, it's called waking up. Hawk says he now wants other elders to change their thinking on child sex abuse. What I want to see is Jehovah's Witnesses first not call the branch, not call the headquarters, not call the legal department. I want to see every single time when they learn of child abuse, call the experts. Legal experts say under more scrutiny, Jehovah's Witnesses may not have an option. They have to follow the law. Whatever is happening in, within the religious community does not stand in for what must happen with respect to the law that applies to everybody else. Jehovah's Witnesses said in a statement that elders do report abuse allegations as required by law, writing, the religion of Jehovah's Witnesses does not shield any perpetrator of child abuse from the secular authorities. Pennsylvania last updated its child abuse code in 2014, leaving in clergy penitent privilege. Some lawmakers want to change that. And I can promise you that um, I, will pay, I will look to introduce a bill that will get that done. Join us again tomorrow for a one-on-one -on -one interview with former Speaker of the House Mark Rossi on why he's fighting to pass a window for survivors of child sex abuse to sue their abusers. Harry Lee, Fox 43 News. So if you're not satisfied that this person will not offend again, then you won't reprove your disfellowship. Yes. And when the person's disfellowshipped, they then can still attend meetings and so on, but um, under some restriction, is that right? Under a lot of restrictions, yes. And members of the congregation cannot associate with them socially. Socially or spiritually? Yes. But the person is still otherwise in the world and can associate with people outside of the church? Yes. And you don't take into consideration, do you, how people outside of the church might be kept safe from such a person whom you're not satisfied will not reoffend? If they were outside the church and they were a close friend, I would tell them. Well, and how would you know if they're a close friend and they're outside of the church? Now, if they're a close friend of mine. A close friend of yours? Yes, if I was. Yes. If I associated with them. Well, what about people who are not close friends of yours, others than outside of the church. You don't take any steps, do you, to protect them from this potential reoffending? You don't, do you? You're concerned with the congregation principle. Yeah, we're, we're concerned with the congregations. We are shepherds of the congregation. Yes, and you're not a shepherd to those who are not in the congregation? No. And as an organisation, in your experience, you don't seek to protect or take care of children who are outside of the congregation? That's a broad statement. Um, well, I can limit it. Yeah, limit it. In please. your decision on whether or not to disfellowship someone, you don't take consideration of children outside of the congregation. Do take consideration of them, but um, what ability have we got to protect every child in Australia? Well. What you can do is you can report to uh, the child protection authorities. And that is done in some cases. But generally it's not done, is it? No. It's not done unless there's a legal requirement for it to be done, is there? That is true. 